We need an Uber. Where's the rural Ubers? I'm gonna invent an app. Call it Tuber. Deer Dash. ribs, Mark Stack rib. Right. Uh, yeah, I got 109, 110, 114 day. It'll take about 50 bags. 50 bags? So there's 33 there. There's no wind at all, so I could have went double pros all the way there. Yes. <laughs> the yeah. one time. That's a double pro. I think this one. Yeah, that is V2P. I think that's your number. Resistance. Yeah. So it doesn't matter to me. We just need how many bags? You said 50? How do you feel about this FS? It's done okay for me. Um, I won't. Well, what I'm thinking is that's a smart stack as well. You don't have to worry about turning on the insecticide. And that leaves the majority of the corn up there at 110 day maturity. I guess what's the, I mean, as far as stand goes, how is, how is that? It stands okay. It's typically not a top yielder, but it's right there. Okay. That's been a top yielder. It was up there, I think, two years ago. Is that, that's 111. Oh, okay. That numbering system. That's, like, That's 118 day. I didn't realize he got one. <laughs> that, that mature. Okay. The 1185 was the stuff that was yielding like insane last year, wasn't it? I think so. Well, I'm okay with the LG or the Pioneer. It does not matter to me. Um, does not matter to me. I know that's a double pro. So. I have had. Of late, I've had some stand issues with the LGs. Okay. Well, if there's any sort of stand issue, I obviously know. all of them have stand issues at well, some point. Yeah. Can have. Depends on the year. But if we could avoid that, since it's going to stand for so long, okay. this being planted the first, this is our first cornfield. Well, third. third. But the other two were very early. But. Um, I'm not too worried about it, I guess. It should be dry by the time we go to get to it. So, that's fine. If you want to do the withholes and either the LG or the Pioneer, 109 day. Just keep a lot of it 109 day. Because that, I mean, that 107 day that I ran last year, it, it was yielding. Granted, last year was an outlier, but. The 107 day last year was not yielding because that's where the deer ate it all. Well. <laughs> Part of the deer didn't eat it. <laughs> it was yielding right up there with the rest of them. So, I'm just saying for the maturity, I'm not afraid to put something that short up there. And we've got the 114 day to bring it up a little. Or down. God. You've killed me. <laughs> what do you mean? With 33 bags. First of all, you got an odd number, 19. <laughs> I have two CCS boxes. Yeah. Then you've got just eight of another one. That's that's not terrible, and it's six. Well, I didn't want to put that much 114 day up there. I'm scared. <laughs> You're going to make me change hybrids every time. <laughs> I... One round. <laughs> okay, go to the platter. <laughs> Which more than Which, likely is on the bottom. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. It's a 5778, which I heard is really good. Yeah, it's on the bottom. Um, but yeah, it is. So that's not too bad. You just got to shuffle all that yourself. Um, yeah. No. Well, <laughs> there's only two bags of each, so it's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we'll get the genie then. Grab those two varieties. Or two brands. Yep. 17 varieties. <laughs> <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so today is technically our official day of corn planting. We planted some early just because our field was so dry in a typically normally very wet field. Uh, we just went ahead and planted that. That was like the 15th of April or somewhere in there. But today is the 27th. Everybody's kind of sitting, waiting, not really planting anything. It was so cold, but today is so nice and sunny. We tested the soil temps, it was 60 degrees. Yeah, there's a rain coming, but it's 70 tomorrow. We're just gonna start planting corn. It's late enough, perfect timing in my opinion. If it gets cold, hopefully she'll make it. He's putting down a 626 starter fertilizer with the planter on the corn. And he's adding more zinc with that kickstand uh, because the rate he's only running two three gallons an acre and he knows he needs the zinc typically guys run like five so, okay well this is ready to go yep i will meet, meet you at the north point. yeah there is fuel in it yes <laughs> so i was going to spray this morning but instead i'm gonna take this truck and nurse tank up to the north place where we left the 305 and the soil finisher and I am going to grab that finisher and head it off to a different farm. It is hotter than blazes in this truck. I'll tell you that for free. Lost my train of thought here. I'm going to be taking that 305 down to Cinnabaws. That is a 60 acre field of black sand. So we know that's definitely going to be warm enough. That corn's just going to love sitting in there right now. And if we get a light rain, should be about perfect conditions for that. I'll be heading down there to work that ground ahead of the planter. Uh, he's going to be planting a 120 acre field up north and then come on down to a piece of corn on corn where I ran that strip freshener. He's going to be planting into that because we know those strips are were worked recently and so that soil's loose there and they, those should be pretty warm as well. Uh, we're trying to stick to the worked ground because it is supposed to get a little chillier at night and rain and a cold rain and corn don't mix so we're kind of trying to be careful here but that is the plan for today i'm going to be working ground get that worked ahead of the planter keep the planter rolling the sprayer's got time plenty of time i'm hoping to get back with that finisher and spray 170 acres or so tonight yet dad is really second guessing himself here whether or not he should plant that corn. I think it'll be fine. It's supposed to get up to 65 degrees today, close to 70 tomorrow. Chance of rain Saturday and 50 degrees. I get that's a cold rain, but they're only talking a tenth, if not any rain. It's a 50% chance. And then Sunday cold, Monday a chance of rain but it's warming up and then 70s the week after that high 60s I don't know but we're out at the farm that I'm gonna be working up this 60 acres just kind of seeing what weeds are up and uh, we've we've definitely got we've got some penny cress it's pretty tall by now that's i think it'll still die with what i'm spraying got that's poison hemlock and the purple flowers are henbit so uh, other than that the only thing i really see is like maybe some chickweed here and there as well Let's see if i can find some chickweed here we go got chickweed growing here but a lot of henbit, obviously, as you can see, all the purple in there. Um, I'm gonna be working this ground, so I'm gonna tear up most of this. There is a lot out there, so I know I won't get it all. Not a big deal, just wanted to scout it a little bit, see what, see what weeds were out here. Gonna be working a little too deep, I don't know. I did deepen my disc behind me here, see what this looks like next to each other. Here's where I deepened my disc. Uh, 
I don't know, that looks pretty good. I don't want to go too deep. Maybe I'll deepen it just a touch. Just a touch and call it good. That could have been a nice pop tire. Stop looking at my rack. We'll say this thing is doing a beautiful job. Just on the first pass, I'm running in 10th gear, about six and a half mile an hour. If I could pull this thing faster, seven and a half, eight mile an hour, it would really do it a lot more justice. Which, there are times I'm running this thing in 10th at seven mile an hour, and that's when it looks that good. But this 305 is just not quite enough ponies for how deep we're, we're running, and the discs are all the way down to cut up these weeds. But it does the job. I'm a little shallower, obviously, you know, I can run seven mile an hour and like in the ripped ground. Then it just becomes, can you stand it in the cab? So when you're running on that ripped ground, you are riding a bull. cover crop was so thick that I'm sure it was hard for him to see where the heck his rows were at. I actually, they seeded this cover crop and then I came in with the strip till bar after and made these strips so that it was a little easier to see his rows, but this stuff came up so nice that it really was probably a little tough for him. I imagine these are up by now or, excuse me, germinated. They should be, they better be, let's put it that way. If they're not dead. Uh-huh. There's a boy. Oh, I broke them. Well, I snapped them off on the hype hypocotyl. This little neck that's turned here is the hypocotyl, I believe. And the little two, the split part of this bean that just broke off is the, boy, the hypocotyl and the, uh, what is the word? Cotyledon. Is that right? Gosh dang it, I'm gonna have to look that up. Hypocotyl and cotyledon. What? That sounds right. I know the neck is the hypocotyl, but I cannot remember what that little split part is. It is a cotyledon. I'm not crazy. I don't know why the, the that word was just, it sounded right, but it didn't sound right at the same time. So the little bendy neck portion is the hypocotyl, and the, the little leaves, the split leaves there on the end that I showed you, that is the cotyledon. So I'm not crazy. I somewhat know what I'm talking about. I think I call myself a farmer, but I can't even tell you what the, uh, growth stages of bean are. That is something I do need to get better at. I need to study up on uh, on the growth stages and all that, especially since I am the one doing all the spraying. I've got an idea. The V2 or the V stages and corn and the R stages and beans. And the bar is wet.
it didn't look like it was raining. So where's the hydraulic line that's bad or broken? Oh, I see. Well, that's not good. She's come apart. Well, I am almost done. And that is the hydraulic line for the discs, and they are where I want them to be anyway. I just won't be able to turn with the implement down. Uh, because I can't lift the discs. So I'm just going to finish before wasting my time fixing that. So I've literally got one more pass on my end rows left. We'll just leave them down, I'll have to pick up and turn. Not a big deal. Well, that field's done. I am headed to a sprayer. And I've got to check the oil on that sprayer because obviously when I changed the oil at the beginning of the year, it was like two and a half gallons low from sitting in the shed. So obviously it's leaking. So that's not just going to fix itself. I know it's going to be low just depends on how low it is whether or not I can still run it or if I need to run back home and get some oil okay I gotta remember where the dipstick is on this dumb thing there it is it's so handy so handy out here Oh, she's full. As full as she gets. Oh, yeah. It's not even leaking. I mean, that's as good as she gets. I don't know where all that oil is. I don't know where all that oil is coming from on the bottom of the machine, but... It's not coming from this, clearly. No, but that must be a very slow leak. And it must have just leaked out two and a half gallon sitting in the shed. I got over here last night and I ended up spraying about 20 some odd acres that I had left on the sprayer. Tried to carry it over here so that that way I only have to load once. So all the water sitting on that nurse tank should get me the rest of this field done. And then I'll have to go get more, but makes it all the more easier this morning this afternoon I'm, after leveling up all that ground and whatnot it's already almost five o'clock yeah I've got 28.4 acres sprayed Endro's done almost finished here and then we've got a long big field or all the way along here so in the back don't know if that's gonna reach but about the only way I could park the truck and the tank out of the field and get loaded so hopefully it works out all right we've got Zidua we've got grounded AMS MSO P QRS TUV WXYZ we've got the works out of here wait about to go home get the insecticides here in a second all right we got a lot of mixing to do it's mostly just the MSO is a vegetable oil AMS is a fertilizer the ground is basically just an adjuvant for drift reduction so I'm barely using using four gallon of the residual, which is just the actual residual chemical. And the rest of it is literally just extra stuff to make it work better and stick to the plants or the weeds. Well, that took a while. Got the empties up there filled with water, so I couldn't reach my hose over to the sprayer the way I had it parked. So I filled them with water, shook them up, 
poured them in and I just filled them with water again. A lot of them aren't even chemical, so it's not that big a deal, but might as well. I almost forgot about you. Mom brought food. I'll eat it after I spray. Well, it gets pretty loud in here, so probably won't film much of me spraying. But just know that I do have 120 acres I've got to spray here. Well, 100 acres. So I'll be back when it's done, I guess, unless something breaks down. System makes it very accurate. You know, on my old ag leader, probably would have said 124 acres sprayed. But with the section control now, there's a lot less overlapping. That's a lot more accurate. And this is about 118 and a half acres, and it says I have sprayed 118.8, so very happy with it. Fortunately, I'm not going to finish the 50 acres that I needed to do today. <sighs> Would have gotten done, but I decided to go work that 60 acres over at Cinnabaws so that Dad can keep running with the planter. But I did get this 120 sprayed, despite getting a very late start at 5 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and run and grab water, fill the nurse tank, come back, fill with enough water for the 50 and then maybe another 30 or 300 gallon, excuse me. That is the worst part about just farming with just the two of us. If we had one other guy, just being able to run us around. We need an Uber. Where's the rural Ubers? I'm gonna invent an app, call it Tuber. Deer Dash. Completely forgot about Dad and I's lunch. The plan was to get up there to him tonight with the sprayer, but obviously working the ground and stuff, didn't get that completed. And so, Jan, plans have changed. I'm gonna run his food up to him. And we're thinking it's gonna time out to where he needs to fill the planter again. And I can help him throw sacks and stuff like that. He can have his lunch, so, at 8 p.m. Maybe I'll eat my lunch, too. <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna leave me filling with water and trying to fill that sprayer probably in the dark, definitely in the dark, so that's gonna be interesting. I may not get that done, who knows, we'll see. I may just do that in the morning. We made it. Yes, we did. Let's 
exit it is up, correct? Because you go back up. Yeah. Yep, you picked the roughest pass. <laughs> I really did pick the roughest one. <laughs> I think you picked the roughest <laughs> pass. We managed to finish that 120 acre field. I ended up coming up here helping dad fill and uh, brought him his lunch, his late lunch. I wasn't too hungry, so I went ahead and took over the planter and planted the rest of it for him. And since we got it done, we're just gonna go ahead and move the planter tonight. It's pretty late, but that way his moving is done and I just gotta worry about me tomorrow. So I've got the nurse tank stationed here where he's planted these the beans and the corn. This will be my last bean field I spray. So tomorrow I'll just bring my pickup from home to here, grab the nurse tank. That leaves the truck here for me so that whenever I get back to the sprayer, I'll spray my last field. Bring the sprayer here. My pickup will already be sitting here. I'll drive the truck down to the nurse tank, bring it up, and then that way I'm done moving. So it all works out.